Thank you. Mr. President, members of the legislature, I don't want to be confrontational or argumentative, but I have to correct Senator Groney. He said the two men crucified with Christ, one on the left and one on the right, both said we deserve to be here. That's not the way the Bible said it. One was ridiculing him and said, if you say who you are, come on down off the cross. It was the other one who said, indeed, we deserve to be here, but he's an innocent man. So people don't get things straight. The only time Jesus was confronted with an actual death penalty case was when he was brought a woman caught in the act of adultery and the law said she should die. And when the ones who were the hypocrites and wanted to catch him and wanted to see him participate in a death penalty said, what do you say? Is that what the law says? Jesus didn't deny it. That meant death should be forthcoming. They wondered if he'd carry it out. He said, then let the one without sin among you cast the first stone. Then he wrote on the ground when he looked up, they were all gone. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? She said, Lord, I don't have any. He said, then I don't condemn you either. But there's a part to the story I always add to these. Jesus did not deny that there was a death penalty provision in the law, that a crime had been committed that called for the death penalty and the woman was caught in the very act. But he amended the law and he said, the one who is to carry out the death penalty, Senator Bloomfield, is he that is without sin among you. And one of the smart Alex said, well, you say you're without sin, you carry it out. And then Jesus put the trump on him. The one without sin will not carry it out. You all don't get the understanding of things. You don't realize the depth of what it is that we are doing here today. You're not following me. If you want to follow somebody, follow Pope Francis. He says what I'm saying, or I say what he's saying. George will. They like on this floor when they have no argument to make me the focal point. You're lining yourself with chambers. Senator Schnoor said that. But when there was an amendment he wanted, he aligned himself with me. When he needed help on a bill and the significance, he aligned himself with me. I'm the tool that everybody uses when it's convenient. And I'm the devil that they can invoke when it's convenient. But today, we're doing something that transcends me, that transcends this legislature, that transcends this state. We're talking about human dignity. And we're not even talking necessarily about the human dignity of the ones you all call the worst of the worst. We're talking about ourselves. What do you think of yourself? Are you better than the worst of the worst when you say do to that one what that one did? You are supposed to be above that. The U.S. Supreme Court said that you cannot have cruel and unusual punishments because they degrade the human spirit. They degrade and disregard human dignity. And therefore, the Eighth Amendment prohibits these kind of punishments. And that's why judges will not let a governor, will not let an attorney general, will not even let a legislature impose cruel punishments. They'll say you can't do it. And they will point out that justice is not determined in the way you determine something by a popularity contest. I'm not an echo. I can think, the people in my district know that I'm not here to reflect ignorance. I'm not here to reflect cruelty. I'm not here to reflect vengeance. I'm to study the issues, find out what is best for the people as a whole in uplifting society. And then I apply my judgment. And if they dislike the way I apply my judgment, they get somebody else in office. anything and yet I get elected again and again and again and I don't know one person in the 40 years I've because of his or her vote against the death penalty and that's not going to happen to any of you and Senator Larson may not know whether or not tonight his soul will be demanded of him Who that which he thinks is right his heart has convicted him. 
He ought to do what is right and don't put it off until next year. Mr. President, I will ask for a call of the House and when we All those in favor vote aye. All those opposed vote nay.